Okay, circle theorems A, A star questions. Um, mainly that's to do with angles, it'll be to do with the alternate segment theorem involved in a question. But here we go. Um, don't forget to pause and have a go first. But here we go. Um, we've got tangents, we've got an letter A here. Um, we're told B, D, C. B, D, C is 58. So if we that's um, formed from this um, segment. That angle's formed for this segment, so that angle for that segment forms with the tangent is also 58. That's the alternate segment theorem. So A, B, C is the reason is the alternate segment theorem, and that's the only one with really a name. So often, if you're not sure give it a guess, have a write that down. Now we've got to work out the value of A. Now we know that uh, the lengths of lines of tangents from the point where they touch the, the circumference of the circle to the point where they cross, these are equal where two tangents cross. So this is an isosceles triangle, so that's also 58, and so they add up to 116 plus A equals 180 so A is 180 minus 116, which equals um, 64 degrees. OK, we've got a cyclic quadrilateral, and we've got uh, a tangent to the circle. So this angle 32 is the same as this angle, to 30, which is 32, because of the alternate segment theorem, where this chord here forms an angle with a tangent is 32 of the alternate segment theorem angle formed from that chord is also 32. 181 plus 32 is 113 so this angle here is going to be 67 to make it up to 180 and then we can use the cyclic quadrilateral rule to make that 180 so uh, uh, x is going to equal 180 minus 67 which is 113 and then we've got to work out uh, angle at y. So we've got that's 113, and we've got the interior of the, sorry, the alternate angle, z angle here on these parallel lines makes this 32. So y is going to be 180 minus 32 minus 113, which is going to be 635, I think. So 40, 45, yeah, 35 degrees. Okay, this question we've got um, cyclic quadrilateral, we've got an isosceles triangle, we've got a tangent. Work out the value of x. So x is opposite this angle in the cyclic quadrilateral, so they add up to 180. So x is going to be 180 minus 86, which is 94. To work out the value of y, um, this angle here is the same as this angle here by the alternate segment theorem, because the angle formed from this chord, which touches this angle in this segment, is the same as y. And because we've got an isosceles triangle here, we've got um, 180 minus 86 is also 94 again, but that's both of these. So we've got to do 94 divided by 2, which is 47 degrees. And write down the name of the theorem used in part B, part 1. No, that's the alternate segment theorem. Okay, this is a new one for circle theorem enthusiasts. We've got the intersecting chord theorem where we have this, these values, where A times B equals C times D. And we want to work out the length of D. We are told um, C to X is 9, so, and that, that length there is d to x is 16 and ax and bx are the same 
So we've got whatever value of that, we'll call it x. That's a square number. So um, without a calculator, this just ties on a calculator and square root it. But without a calculator, I'm going to realize that 9 is 3 times 3, and 16 is 4 times 4 and then regroup it, so we've got 3 times 4 times 3 times 4 so that's 144 so x equals 12 ok, uh, another version of the uh, intersecting chords theorem um, this one goes outside of the circle but the rule is still the same um, a to the point where they cross so ax times by b to the point where they cross bx is equal to c to the point where they cross which is x plus 12.5 times by dx which is 12.5 oh, and ax and bx is going to be 20 times by 12 and that's going to be uh, x plus 12.5 times 12.5 so that's 240 equals that so if we divide by 12.5 we get 19.2 and that equals x plus 12.5 so we take away the 12.5 and we get x equals 19.2 minus 12.5 which is 6.7 okay proving something using circle theorems now this sort of question is quite tricky but if you've got an idea of what you're trying to prove we're trying to prove that AD AD is parallel to BC now how could we prove that well we could show that um, that we have alternate angles here that are equal um, we could show that um, we have interior angles out to 180 so th those angles but we're going gonna to stick with this um, especially as this 96 and these isosceles tell me that um, if I do 180 minus 96 in fact let's do it properly 180 minus 96 uh, equals 84 so the angle B A C equals 84 divided by 2 which is 42 uh, so does um, B C A as our uh, in an isosceles triangle. So you're just spelling out everything you do at each step. Um, another thing we know is because this angle is 54, this angle is 54 by the alternate segment theorem. So by the alternate segment theorem, angle uh, DCA equals 54 degrees. Okay, so we've got 54, we've got 42, we've got 42. Um, we've got a cyclic quadrilateral, so this, these two angles add up to 180. So since A, B, C, D, cyclic quad, angle B, A, D equal uh, plus angle B, C, D equals 180 so angle B, A, D equals 180 minus 96 is 84 so angle um, C, A, D equals uh, 84 take away 42 which gives 42 there. Therefore, since angle CAD is equal to BCA, um, AD is parallel to BC. There are other ways of doing it, but that's the one I picked. 
Okay, I think this is the last question. We've got to try and prove that PQ is parallel to RS. Lots of information here. We've got some straight lines. Um, we've got two cyclic quadrilaterals. Okay, to prove these are parallel, we're going to have to show that this angle here and this angle here add to 180 and that should do it. So if I call this angle here x then by the cyclic uh, quadrilateral rule this angle here is 180 minus x so rxy by cyclic quad rule equals 180 minus x. So this angle here this angle here angle PXY is going to equal 180 minus 180 minus x which is equal to x so that angle is x as they as they form a straight line, and then again by the cyclic quadrilateral rule, angle PXY is uh, sorry not PXY, it's the PQY the one we want equals 180 minus angle PXY so angle PQY equals 180 minus X therefore uh, PQ parallel to RS because Um, angle RSY plus angle PQY equals 180.